Alright, I um, decided to make another video here about uh, radio technology. This is my Panasonic stereo that I'm going to be using for this video. Uh, I'm not sure how long this is going to be, but the subjects that I want to go over in this video I consider to be very important, uh, especially in relation to what Tesla was trying to do with wireless electricity. Radio technology has a lot to do with wireless power, and I'll go over that more as I explain. This is my home Panasonic stereo. I uh, unscrewed all the sides to it. Let's see if I can get this off without busting anything. There we go. There we go. Okay. Now, usually it always says, do not open, do not remove, fear of electrical shock, do not, you know, it, th that is just ridiculous. That is just some kind of warning label to keep you from going into these things and learning about them, I bet. That's what it seems like to me. Anyway, this is the circuit board side. It's, up, it's upside down, the radio system, but... Uh, You'll be able to kind of see more better from the behind, uh, from behind like this. Okay, what's going on here is that it, all radios are receiving electromagnetic waves from the air and playing them back to you in electrical vibrations through speakers. And the way that uh, f uh, FM radio works is that the radio has to have its own power source and it has to be tuned uh, close or anywhere around a specific frequency that's broadcasting a frequency modulation signal. So the frequency modulation is constantly changing, vibrating ever so slightly depending on... Uh, it's like... Uh, what, like, like imagine if, um, if it's not a wave, if it's just a straight string like on a guitar, then the, what's happening is like the wave is getting plucked electrically. That's what's happening in the air. Let's see, the radio station is sending out electricity through the air, but it's, it's going in the form of a frequency modulation wave that's just vibrating. So you, you don't get any power out of frequency modulation uh, radio transmission. That's why they always need their own power source. That's why this has a plug. That's why it plugs into the wall. And it needs, uh, this is where the antenna uh, if you have one, hooks up to. I've tried to hook up one onto this antenna a bunch of time, and uh, it always seems to fall off because it's not designed very well. But the the other side of radio, though, is what came before frequency modulation, which is AM radio, and that is the radio type that I pretty sure Tesla invented, and that's called amplitude modulation. And that's, that's very different from frequency modulation because in amplitude modulation, the frequencies are very specific when you tune to them. Like, they're, like the radio broadcasting stations are sending out a transmission at a very, very specific frequency. And it stays at that frequency constantly. And what's happening when they broadcast is that the signal's strength changes in its, in its power output. Um, in amplitude or amps like uh, whatever the amount of power in amps that is going into the signal is changing ever so slightly because it's receiving electrical uh, amps from somebody talking when somebody talks into a microphone that's electrified it, it the vibrations of your voice vibrate the wires and create more amps in the electrical current and that is what amplitude modulation is but the thing is that energy is being transmitted wirelessly that is wireless electricity see this is what's called a ferrite rod right here this is what detects the electromagnetic waves in the air and what turns the electromagnetic waves in the air back into um, electrical um, magnetic uh, uh, what is it, a uh, force, you know, like a, an electromagnet, but it, it's not very strong, but it's, when the, uh, the rod is electrified, 
and tuned to a specific frequency by the uh, oscillator that has uh, a bunch of plates that you know change the capacitance of the uh, amount of current that's uh, whizzing back and forth in the oscillator and that tunes the ferrite rod to a specific frequency but as the thing warms up though the frequency changes and with AM radio you constantly have to be adjusting the frequency as it warms up because the frequencies are very specific if the frequency gets off ever so slightly then you're not able to pick up the difference in the amplitude modulation that you're receiving that's why in later radio versions they had a little light that came on that's the, what Tesla worked on over a hundred years ago he worked on AM modulation radio and he used a little light that when he tuned it to a specific frequency the light would come on and that when that and he worked on trying to amplify that light that he got I bet from the power in the signal he worked on transmitting the signal and making that light brighter and getting more power out of it because this the the amplitude modulation is sending out a difference in voltage in the uh, antenna. Um, I could show in another video that, uh, like with my handheld ham radio receiver, what, for for a strange coincidence, when it's plugged in to the uh, power adapter, the uh, it'll read volt the it'll read me the amount of volts that it's uh, charging to. Or, or that it's at, and you know, it has the amount of volts that's in the battery. But if um, if the power adapter is plugged into it and it's not plugged into the wall, then it reads zero volts. And for it, for some reason, it, it detects that it's receiving zero volts from the adapter, so the total voltage becomes zero. And then one time, uh, I noticed that when I was receiving, a, somebody talked on the radio on that frequency. All of a sudden, I saw the voltage go up to one point four. And then when he stopped talking, it dropped it back down to zero again. So what happens in radio transmission is you're actually receiving a difference in voltage. And you're uh, with AM radio, you're receiving a difference in amperage. And if you ever study electricity and learn what power output is, it always has to do with those two those two specific parts of the current voltage and amperage and if you can control voltage and amperage then you can control the amount of power that you put into a signal or that you receive in a signal and that's why uh, in later versions of radio they had receivers like this this receiver right here has its own inverter in it. See, this has a inverter right here that has a AC power output of 300 watts there, 100 watts there. It has its transformer coil here, and it's designed to receive um, pretty much the electromagnetic waves that would power the speakers but if you were clever enough like Tesla back then you could probably design something that would uh, receive a differential in amps and volts that would control the amount of power you could get out of this thing from a broadcasting station so that uh, that is my thoughts on what I think this stuff is all about here and I'm still trying to get it all worked out, you know, in my head and trying to build something that actually works. I've been experimenting with my Tesla coil and with all the capacitors that I have and with different transformers, but being able to control amperage and voltage in a s specific signal would, um, would allow you to control the amount of power that you could receive in some type of receiver, which you could... Like, for example, if you were able to control the amount of amps going into a signal that was making a differential of 12 to 15 volts in, in, a, in a, say, an amplitude modulation sine wave, you could get a receiver that could receive that 
And if a battery is receiving 12 volts or more, like say, uh, you know, like one of my uh, 12 volt batteries here was receiving a, you know, a differential in voltage of, you know, 14 or 15 volts, then if I draw power out of this, and as long as it stays above 12 volts, then the energizing effect will uh, will never decrease. The, the battery will constantly be feeding out energy. The, the electric charge will never go down. So uh, if you could, so the basically in all radio technology these days, they're designed to turn on a circuit. When you have a remote control and you press the on off button, the uh, the the uh, uh, radio wave that it sends to the TV or whatever you're turning on turns on a circuit or it flips a switch or you know it has a power source of its own, whether it be a battery or plugged into the wall. You could have a remote control car that has its own battery and you send that electromagnetic wave that turns on a circuit and it turn you know makes a motor begin to turn or changes the direction of the travel of the boat or whatever you're operating. And it's 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 the same thing in this set and, and all radio technology. It's it's controlling uh the the amps and the the, the and the volts at different distances. Well, uh I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there and try to uh try to uh, regather my thoughts on uh on how I think it's all gonna be built in a full I'm gonna to try to make eventually a transmitting station that could transmit AM radio and uh, a differential in voltage as well to a receiver that can have a battery that is basically being con that's constant the battery is going to be constantly being charged by whatever be whatever is being brought you know by the signal that it's receiving and then if the battery is constantly being charged by a radio signal then all I got to do is connect a an inverter to it, and uh, the, I, and I could be uh, and I can turn that low voltage, say DC, into a uh, high voltage AC, and I'd I'd never lose charge in the battery, uh, which is the theory, which is my theory anyway. It's, it's it's instead of the ability of just turning on a circuit, it's basically the ability to charge a battery wirelessly at a distance, and that battery can be used to control something else like a motor or be used to uh, turn into AC and run household appliances and stuff so that's that's the theory on uh, wireless my wireless energy you know ideas for now I, I the, all I can all I can really do is just you know share them and post them because trying to build this kind of technology is very very difficult because it has to be very specific and it's very expensive and if you do ever get something built, it, it usually will require a lot of power too. So I, I just, this is just, I might not be able to even do it in my lifetime, for all I know. But this kind of, this kind of idea, the the idea of radio technology, is not v recognized hardly at all in society these days. The like radios have kind of like become a. A uh, very old technology, like they're not—they're no longer very glamorous items, and they're—they're they're very important because they—they they are wireless energy. They're—they're they're an invisible energy that they're receiving through the air. When you plug anything in that plays music through a speaker, the music that it's playing usually comes from some kind of electrical source. And whatever the electrical source is, is usually has a battery or plugged into the wall. But in this case, the electrical source that you're receiving in amplitude modulation is actual power. It's actual electric power. So that's that's real. I mean, every time an AM transmission is broadcast, you're sending out actual electromagnetic waves that uh, can be transformed back into... Um, electromagnetic force you know like uh, if you have a wire wrapped around an iron core and you put electricity through the wire it would become an electromagnet that's what's happening here but it's receiving the energy from the air okay so hopefully uh, this will be a, a somewhat uh, educational video I hope I uh, explained it well enough and uh, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and it's only, uh, what, we got 15 minutes? Yeah, okay, well, that's not too bad.
I hope you can enjoy it and maybe watch it again if you need to, but uh, I'm going to uh, stop it there, and thanks for watching.